Indie Warriors, if you're a cozy game lover like me, you've been waiting anxiously for a potion permit to release. And after sinking four hours into the demo alone, I was frothing at the mouth to review the full release. Potion Permit grants us with another life and crafting sim to sink our teeth into, with a distinctly gorgeous pixelated art style. Every background feels like I'm playing in a painting, and the animations are incredibly fluid. I even love the way characters sway in place while standing and whenever you speak to them. But enough of my fawning over the graphics, let's get into the details. You play a chemist the doctors of this world, and you've been sent by the medical association to help the rural town of Moonbury. The mayor's daughter has been sick for a while, and the witch doctor, who now hates us for being outsiders and meddling with the medicine in town, hasn't been able to help her. In fact, most of the town hates us from the get-go because of deepest lore reasons, and it isn't until we start healing people in our ramshackle clinic and fixing issues around town that they finally open up to us. So, how do we run our clinic and solve problems? By foraging mushrooms, killing slime, chopping down trees, annihilating bears who totally deserved it, and slicing up flowers. And don't worry, my fellow environmentalist people, in case the potion as medicine part didn't clue you in, this world doesn't pretend to be realistic. Everything magically respawns the next day. These resources are then used to make potions in your cauldron, which is limited at the start of the game to only 5 ingredients max per potion. Each potion has a unique shape that you must fill out using your resources. You have a sickle, a hammer, and an axe, and these are your tools to collect resources. Every action with your tools uses some of your stamina, which you can refill by eating foods or going to the bathhouse or just going to bed and starting a new day. In your clinic, you study the parts of the body the patient talks about in order to diagnose the issue. The diagnosis is made up of very easy minigames that don't really add much value to the game, in my opinion, but I guess it's more engaging than just clicking, okay, heal person, please. These minigames offer things like keyboard DDR. Simon says, once you diagnose the issue, the appropriate potion will be required. You can make a few of each potion ahead of time, as I did, so you can diagnose diagnose and treat patients quickly. Remember, you're a city person, and they still don't completely trust you, so whether you heal the people and do it in a timely fashion affects the town's opinion of you. Get town opinion low enough, and no one will talk to you. Literally. In our home, besides crafting potions at our cauldron, you can decorate and you can research new potions. The research aspect is made up of another minigame that truthfully is kind of lame with how easy it is. It is somehow easier than the other ones. I'm all about accessibility, but if the minigame has me questioning the point of its very existence, perhaps it isn't adding anything worthwhile to the gaming experience. You can also upgrade your tools, upgrade your cauldron, and improve the efficiency of your tools. So there's plenty to keep you motivated to unlock more and just one more day, just complete one more. And finally, you can of course, fish. I feel like people love fishing in video games more than fishing in real life, and I don't really get either. Not that I disliked the fishing in Potion Permit, in fact, I was surprised the route it took for the mechanic and I found it engaging. But also, it's fishing, so do with that what you will. And now, for the most important part, you can romance people! And I guess you can also be friends with them or whatever, but I'm aiming for a consensual fuck pile. Or I'll just have a ton of game slots and test out every single relationship option. Except for the mayor's daughter, cause that felt kinda weird. And did I mention? You have a doge? Your dog follows you around for pets and food. So, pretty accurate. But also is... <gasps> useful. You can have your dog lead you to a character you're looking for, so no need to memorize every character's schedule. Just follow the doggo. Last but certainly not least, the music is soothing whimsy that I honestly mistook for the Stardew Valley soundtrack. If you like mood music, Potion Permit sound design is for you. For performance, solid frame rate, very comfy to play on a controller, not so much on the keyboard, I definitely recommend using a controller for this. So much so that I was already 5 hours in without noticing and suddenly it's 1am and I've been playing this for way too long and I've got work the next morning. But then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. The Fire Nation in this metaphor being bugs. Game-breaking bugs, in fact. 
The first one I encountered was a small one. It froze, and all I had to do was restart the day from the beginning, which was annoying, but not the end of the world. Then, my main missions disappeared. I would open up my book, and it would tell me that there's two missions I should be doing, but there would be nothing listed. No matter how many times I restarted the program, it never came back. Now, I am normally not the type to take bugs into big consideration when it comes to indies. I consider it par for the course and would rather roll with it, wait to see when devs update and fix all the issues, but I can't say that for Potion Permit. Why? Because I think this game is absolutely fantastic, and I don't want your experience to get spoiled like mine did by a game-breaking bug. Imagine you have put hours in and all of that is lost to start all over again. All the progress you made, the friendships you've been building, the upgrades you've gotten, gone. And while yes, this game is very relaxing, it's disheartening to see all the work you put into this world become meaningless. It's with a heavy heart that I say, wait. Wait to see if the devs iron out all these bugs. Without those fixes, Potion Permit is a recipe for heartbreak.